Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Monday night, 8.50 p.m. California time. January 12th, 2026. Here's the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 1.3 across the uh, Washington area. Looks like that may be uh, just north of the Mount St. Helens area in Washington. A couple smaller earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. And uh, actually it looks like we got a little swarm going on here in the last week around Mossy Rock, Washington. About 13 miles deep or so underneath this area. Uh, the Cascadia Trimmer map here shows us um, a little bit on the elevated side as well. 192 epicenters of slow slip events there across the northern end and the uh, southern end there of the Cascadia subduction zone. Of course, that's building up stress there across the locked area. Uh, California down here, a little spotty as far as northern California goes. Uh, getting the return of the swarm, it looks like, here this, after, this evening uh, near Livermore. This is actually a new swarm, it looks like. I was thinking this is the San Ramon swarm, but this is to the southeast here. Um, let's see, off of the, uh, maybe the Williams Fault down here? It's in between the Greenville Fault and the Calaveras Fault, as far as the uh, parallel faults go. But this has just been, what, number six of some odd earthquake swarms around the area recently? I know in the last couple months we've had various earthquake swarms around the Bay Area. Just another sign here that things are getting pretty tight out here across the area. Kind of like the big crunch going on, right? A lot of stress building up and eventually one of these or maybe even a number of these are going to pop out here across the Bay Area. Now this is nothing big. Uh, just a decent swarm here. Looks like that is uh, underneath Lake Dell Valley State recreational area uh, maybe a dam up here it looks like as well a little uncertain on terms of the uh, earthquake potential in this area like I say it's just one of many swarms that have been occurring out here across the San Ramon area uh, this is just the last 30 days of earthquake activity showing the main swarm around San Ramon right on the Pleasanton Fall but this here kind of a new one kicking up out of the blue we'll continue to watch that Bay Area, like I say, is looking pretty uh, active here recently. A couple smaller quakes near the uh, creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Southern California, aside from that 3.0 late last night, really nothing above 2.5. All these relatively small microquakes. Uh, one earthquake near Hemet, a little 0.5 right now, but. Uh, Nothing big, nothing big happening here across the uh, Southern California area for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, two earthquakes being reported. One from yesterday, one from today. Uh, let's go double check that, make sure we got uh, the latest data here. USGS did put out a little informational statement how there's a, a portion up here around Yellowstone Caldera, the Northern Rim area is what they call it, uh, near Norris Junction, I believe. Showing a little bit of uplift here since about uh, oh June or July of last year. Nothing big. Uh, they, they say about an inch uplift, which is uh, very minimal, but it still shows that there's a uh, you know some magma and whatnot um, down below, about nine miles or so down below the uh, is the uh, magma chamber. Little earthquake here this afternoon. Really nothing big going on there across Yellowstone National Park. Just We'll continue to keep an eye on it. This, you know, interesting how things stir up out there, as far as the uh, inflation goes and earthquake swarms. But uh, just for now, kind of quiet. That's the way we want it. Not always going to be that way though. Earthquake uh, out, earthquakes out in the oil fields, including one outside of Amarillo. Let's see. Uh, I'm pretty certain they got lots of oil fields up here as well. Really not seeing anything listed up on the map, but uh, a little 2.7 this afternoon here, it looks like, outside of this uh, community here. Uh, what else we got around the country? Uh, nothing major going on. New Madrid Seismic Zone, pretty quiet. Down here across the Southeast Pacific Rise, a 5.6 coming in near Easter Island. That uh, originally coming in as a 5.8 little bit of a downgrade there by the USGS out there in the uh, fracture boundaries 
Now, when activity stirs up out there, out here across this area, it's the Pacific Plate and the Nazca Plate boundary. Notice the arrows separating, pulling apart here. Great new oceanic crust. The Pacific Ocean is going to be, uh, um, well, the Pacific Plate here is growing. Definitely uh, going to be a considerably si uh, bigger area uh, many, many, many years down the road. Uh, but for now, these earthquakes that occur out here in these divergent zones, look where the arrows are pointing, right along the Puchilli Trench. So let's see if we got anything stirring up there right now. That was uh, previous. Let's take a look at the Earthquake 3D globe. Um, I do see some newer activity up here. Looks like that may have uh, followed that 5.6. Let's see. That was at 6.55. No, I take that back. I was... Uh, this was uh, following this event. Uh, most of the time, though, maybe down here it looks like along the Puchilli Trench here, we got some activity stirring up. Either way, watch the Puchilli Trench. It normally shows some uptick there when we get uh, activity out there in the uh, East Pacific Rise, Southeast Pacific Rise. Uh, Japan, man, still kind of watching this. Got another earthquake up here along the Kuro Cam Chatka. This one about six miles deep. We're a 5.2. Been pretty active out here all along the uh, Kuro Kamchatka Trench and down here across the Japan Trench. Seen a swarm of large earthquakes out here. Keeping an eye on a number of regions out here. And I've said it and I'll say it again. You know, you can pretty much draw a line here across this area. The entire western Pacific here. Uh, through, uh, I'm really not too concerned with another big earthquake up here across Russia. Although a little section up here did not rupture. Uh, during that 8.8 .8 that struck back here in July uh, of last year. It was a 500 kilometer long length, which is 300 miles here of the uh, subduction zone that produced that 8.8. .8. So there was still a little segment up here, and then we got the remainder half here of the uh, Kuro Cam Chatka that's capable of a nine pointer. Uh, just kind of watching this whole area. It's been super active, a lot more than normal. Someone asked if that's typical not yeah really not not all these large earthquake swarms here it's occasional you know we, when we get fours and occasional five you know that that can happen out here but this has just been consistent elevated earthquake activity same for the philippines region down here uh, towards the southern end got a decent swarm of activity stirring up here uh, towards the uh, southern end of the philippine trench which is a fairly lengthy subduction zone here these earthquakes about 32 miles or so underneath this area. The latest of 5.2. And as you can see here, there's uh, quite a bit more earthquake activity stirring up there in that region. This is where the uh, 6.4 struck here. Oh, two days ago. Now, whether you want to call this aftershock activity or just continued seismic activity, that's up to you. But I think this is just continued seismic activity out here uh, due to all the... Uh, Pressure increasing in the area. There's even a deeper quake right here. Notice that raised off the globe just south of the uh, area of interest here. Pretty good cluster across the Java Trench. Nothing big going on. Absolutely quiet out here across the, uh, the rest of the area. Look at this. Unusually quiet. Um, let's see what else we got. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. The Mediterranean and the Middle East, as far as earthquake activity, pretty quiet for now. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, episode 40, the eruption there has come to a halt. Uh, but that comes with, uh, looks like a couple earthquakes there on the, underneath uh, Mauna Loa. This one fa fairly deep, 2.7, uh, about 5 miles or so underneath this area as well. Uh, the latest information here from Kilauea Volcano, it's, this was what it looked like earlier. Seen some decent fountains going on there. Uh, that has since died off. Now we just got the uh, the hot lava flows out there. Going to light up the nighttime sky or the nighttime area for a little while. Pretty neat to see, I'm sure, if you got a visual perspective of that. So let's take a look here at the um, deformation data. That lasted about nine hours or so. As far as the eruption goes, um, yeah, there we go. Went down, not quite as far as what our last one did, but then again, we didn't go up as far in terms of the inflation. But uh, 
Yeah, this one looked a little less here compared to uh, a lot of these. Maybe similar to what happened back in uh, November of last year, end of November. We've seen just a very short-lived, well, nine hours. That's fairly reasonable. But it, the, you notice on this one, it wasn't just boom, you know, hours and hours of major fountaining. Literally, there was a whole bunch of just spillovers, flowovers, um, occasional fountaining. And then the, I believe one of the vents there was just shooting out, you know, quite a few... Uh, uh, large fountains of lava but um we didn't really see both of them going full blast at once so that's probably why um probably why we didn't really get uh to deplete it as much as what i'm guessing here i mean if anything we'll get uh a return of an eruption here episode 41 sooner uh, because we didn't quite go down all the way here in terms of the uh, depletion value. Notice back here in November, there was a short-lived and then the eruption came up very quick. It didn't take too long. It took about, oh, about 9, 10 days or so for that to kick back up for another eruption. So I'm guessing that will probably be the same uh, unless something changes here. But uh, I'll continue to watch that as well. Uh, let's see, anything else major going on across the earthquake world? Here's a little earthquake hiding out there in the green flag. It's a one point, what is that, 1.3? A 1.3. Space weather activity. Let's take a look here and see what we got. There's our massive M flare from, uh, well, two days ago now. Well, yesterday. It's going on two days. Uh, we can just barely see the magnetic lines here. Actually, you know, these are... Pretty decent size, considering the sunspot is still back off there on the uh, far side. Got some magnetic loops there shooting out. Um, let's take a look here if we can see anything yet. It, uh, we're probably not going to see anything until tomorrow, maybe tomorrow evening, as uh, far as the uh, magnetogram image goes. Yeah, see, I don't... Might, just barely might be seeing something out here. Maybe tomorrow morning we'll check back on that and see what that sunspot looks like. But I think it's going to be an active one once that turns into a Earth directed view. We'll take a little bit, uh, a little bit better view of it there. For now, the flare th threat will remain. Well, these guys actually bumped it up a little bit here. They're already ahead of the game. 25% chance there for M flare. C flare around 90%. Um, and I'm guessing they're basing the off of that sunspot out there on the uh, far eastern limb because these other ones are just pretty quiet looking. This one's grown up here a little bit in size, uh, and that may turn into something. We'll have to watch it, but it's not really capable of too much activity right now. As uh, far as the aurora activity goes, calming down a little bit. Looks like the wind speed's dropping. No major roars there in the forecast for now, folks. Could see some unsettled conditions here because we do have a couple different coronal holes floating around here on the sun. We do have a fairly decent massive coverage area back over here on the eastern side. Uh, now, the important factor in this one is that it's uh, got some center area of the sun coverage as well. So once that pinning it holds, uh, holds together, it almost looks like a fox. There's two ears right here, pointy nose, some eyes. Kind of a small body and a fluffy tail. You guys see that? Crazy. My mind's just no sleep. <laughs> no sleep. Um, but yeah, but yeah, this is kind of center disc. Once it gets over here, that could have an effect here on earthquake activity. We'll have to watch that uh, once it gets into view here. This one was a little thin and really not all that impressive. Um, and that should stir some aurora activity up as well once it's uh, facing the planet and then about 48 to 72 hours afterwards. Uh, storm prediction or uh, severe weather. There's not a whole lot there in the forecast. We'll double check that and see what they have. Yeah, pretty quiet across the board there. Really not a whole lot of change to the forecast here. We got dry conditions across California. Got a massive high pressure ridge out there. Uh, it does look like things may start to change here as we head towards the end of July. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, either way, uh, snow. Got some snow out there. Let's see what we got here for the uh, extended run. Uh, nowhere near down I mean, there's halfway down south here, but not a whole lot. Most of that's up around the Great Lakes and northeast here, a little bit in the Pacific Northwest. 
As uh, far as uh, total accumulated precipitation runs here, yeah, pretty dry out there. Uh, that's pending those storms, um, you know, make it out here towards the end of July. You can see where the dominant high pressure pattern is out there. And it's uh, easily visible out here as well in the um, the wind patterns, the jet stream, right? High pressure is going to push everything way north, and uh, that's exactly what it's doing. Up and over California, bringing all that cold air down across the east. Uh, there's going to be shot after shot of uh, lots of cold air coming down here with that jet stream just zipping down south forcing all that cold air to dip down into the, the uh, 48 there into the states. And then uh, we'll watch this and see how this plays out. I'm hopeful that things will change. We'll get more of a, a zonal flow here, west to east, right into California, and we'll get some more precipitation out there. All right, seismograph stations out there look pretty calm, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there. Quick glance at the... Um, earthquake map here once again let's keep an eye on the bay area you know all these little signs here of swarms all over the place just a very good indicator of a lot of stress that's been building up out here and it, it could be the san andreas fault it could be the hayward fault calaveras fault you know there's there's uh no way of knowing exactly when this is going to happen or when the big event's going to happen but uh, it could be a couple of these out here Considering a lot of these are uh, overdue, Regu you know, their regular intervals have been surpassed. Uh, mostly the Hayward Fault there. That's one I'm watching closely. Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here for the uh, Tuesday morning update. After uh, some sleep here, hopefully. Have a good one.